Calvin this morning, John chapter 3. Sunday mornings we've been going through some, just some basic doctrine. Uh, we've looked at faith and repentance and uh, the triunity of God, just some real basic things. And uh, this morning we're looking at regeneration. Now, the Bible term for it is born again. <laughs> John chapter 3. And you know, it's interesting, a lot of Bible truths have a human side and a divine side. Uh, for instance, uh, the Bible, written by men, given by God. God used, God used humans to do something. Uh, Jesus, you know, in John chapter 1, it, it says he, he's obviously God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, but He came as a man. The Word was made flesh. Human side, divine side. Well, it's the same with salvation. Salvation, there's a human side. We have to believe and repent. You know, we have to be involved. For by grace are you saved through faith. But God's part is that He saves us. Regeneration, the new birth. Uh, God's part. We're going to read John chapter 3. I'm going to read all the way down through verse 16. Uh, some very familiar verses here. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we've seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I've told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We'll stop reading there. Now, someone has said that John 3.16 is probably the most familiar verse in the whole Bible. I'm not sure. Uh, but he, he links it to being born again. You know, knowing Jesus Christ as, as our Savior. Um, uh, as he spoke to Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a, a religious leader. And yet he didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. So, so don't feel bad if, if there's some things that, that you don't understand. But Jesus said this is it's different than a, a physical birth. He says it's a spiritual birth, being born again. Uh, the meaning of regeneration, of being born again, is that it's a spiritual birth. It's a rebirth. And uh, he compares it to a physical birth. And I think when he says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, he's, he's making that comparison. And uh, then he, uh, you know, he makes the difference b between the spirit and, and, the, and the flesh. Obviously, if you exist, if you're here today, you've been born. <laughs> I mean, that, that should go without saying. Jesus said you need to be born again. Now, he's not saying, and that's what Nicodemus asked. You mean I've got to go back into my mother? <laughs> what a picture. Uh, and he says, no, it's a spiritual birth. It's something that's, that's different than that. It's an act of God in the heart. Uh, back in John 1, verse, uh, well, verses 12 and 13, he says, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, 
even to them that believe on His name. We can become children of God. We can be born into God's family. And listen to this, verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He covers everything there. He's saying this is not a physical birth. This is not of blood. He's saying this is not character. It's not the will of the flesh. This is not something you can just do good and, and, and be born again. He says it's not of the will of man. It's not some human philosophy or religion. He's saying it's of God. The new birth is of God. Just like he told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the new birth is by God's mercy. It's not by works. Uh, there's a verse that uh, I love to, to read, Titus chapter 3 and, and verse 5. He says, he's talking about salvation and, and God's loving kindness to us. He says, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. See, we're not saved by good works. We're saved by God's mercy. Uh, it's God showing his kindness and his mercy. And there in Titus, he, he talks about what we were like. Titus 3, 3, he says, we also ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Boy, it sounds like the newspaper, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's the way people are. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. What a wonderful Savior. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. By the washing of regeneration. See, that's what we're talking about. Regeneration, the new birth. God changes us by the washing of re regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed in us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs together of the hope of eternal life. See, when you're born into God's family, you become an heir. And man, He has a wonderful heritage. <laughs> you have a wonderful inheritance in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the rebirth, uh, the being born again, uh, it's a spiritual birth, uh, it's by God's mercy, and the, the Bible says it's, really, it's instantaneous. Uh, this is not something you work at for many years and hope that, you know, someday it'll work out. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and He comes into your heart, man, that's it. Uh, he, he takes over. Uh, it's a, a work of the Holy Spirit, and, uh, you know, you either have the Holy Spirit or, or you don't. And the thing you notice about this as he talks to uh, Nicodemus there is the urgency, the necessity of being born again. You know, he tells him, you must be born again. Uh, in verse 3, if you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Very important. Unfortunately, the, the term born again has been misused by many. And, and they've made it like there's two kinds of Christians, Christians and born again Christians. Well, that's not true. If you're not born again, he says, you're, you're not saved. You need to understand that. Don't, uh, you know, we use it, the world a lot of times takes Bible terms and uses them in other ways. And you might hear about a born again businessman. You know, he used to have a business, now he has a new business. <laughs> well, that's not being born again, all right? Uh, being born again is a spiritual birth. Uh, being born into God's family, being made alive spiritually. And it's important because God says it's important. You know, when he says that word must, you need to listen. <laughs> you must be born again. He's not saying it's a good idea. It might be helpful. He's saying if you don't, uh, it's hell. You must be born again. And we, need, we must be born again, one, because of our sin, and two, because of God's holiness. Yeah, our sin condemns us. Uh, the Bible says we're, we're born in sin. David, in, in writing Psalm 51, God writing it through David, uh, he said, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, he's not saying that his mother was particularly sinful. He's just saying that's just the way it is. We're born sinners. Uh, it's like it, the Bible says, in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Uh, we, we receive a, a heritage of sinfulness uh, just physically. That's why we need to be born again. In Ephesians 2, the end of uh, verse 3, he says, that we were by nature the children of wrath. And that's what we are without Christ. That's why we need to be changed. That's why we need to, uh, to have uh, God do something in our life. And this is a universal thing. 
It'd be like going to the bakery and all they had was one product. <laughs> yeah, going to, going to Kohl's, all they had was one product. Yeah, when God looks at us, uh, without Christ, we're all the same. Sinners, every one of us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of God's holiness, there has to be a change. There's a verse in Hebrews, let me just read it to you. It's Hebrews 12, 14. He says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Wow. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And the Bible says, says our righteousness is like filthy rags. We're not good enough. We can't be holy in ourselves. We have to get it from God. Uh, we have no holiness of our own. Our sin separates us from God. And God calls us to repent and believe the gospel. And he says, when we'll put our faith in him, he'll save us. He'll do the work of regeneration. Uh, Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And like we read in Titus, not by works of righteousness, which we've done. You know, what a difference between what God says and what religion says. Religion's based on the idea of working your way to God, you know, balancing out the scales. Listen, that's just of the devil. <laughs> uh, we can't balance out the scales. Only Christ can. Only God can make us new. That's why Jesus came. Listen, if you could get to heaven without Jesus, you think he'd have wasted his time doing all he did? <laughs> he wrote the whole Old Testament prophesying his coming. The whole New Testament about how he came and what we should do. I mean... Why would he waste all that time and effort if we could go another way? It's like someone has said, there's no plan B. <laughs> Jesus is the only way. And he said, you must be born again. Well, you know, as you, as you look at this, you begin to notice some things about uh, regeneration, about uh, being born again. One is you see that it's a gift. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If salvation is a gift. I don't know how you are. I like gifts, you know, normally. <laughs> There's been a few gifts I've wondered about, but, you know, uh, generally it's, it's nice to get a gift. And if it's really a gift, it means you don't have to pay for it. If somebody says, I've got a gift for you, it only costs you $10.99, that's not a gift, all right? <laughs> that's a product. Uh, God gives it as a gift, and he paid the price. Uh, it's not a work. You know, there's those who say, well, you're born again if you get baptized. No, it's not a work. There's some who say, well, you're born again if you speak in tongues. No, it's not a work. It's of God. And you could list all different kinds of ceremonies and things that, that people look to, uh, different experiences. God says that when we have a repentant heart and uh, we believe the gospel, uh, he, he changes us. There's a verse, Acts 3.19, where he says this, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. See, it's God who will blot out our sins. It's God who will change us. Now, our part is to believe and repent. Our part is to, is to trust the Lord. He'll, he'll make us new. We read there in Titus 3 that he talks about the washing of regeneration. He's the one who will cleanse us. Now, he calls on us to live righteous lives and to, to do what's right. But our righteousness really comes from Him, by the washing of regeneration. There was a song uh, I remember hearing when I was younger, Clean before my Lord I stand, and in Him not one blemish does He find. Did I say that right? Clean before my Lord I stand, and in me not one blemish does He find. You know, it's, uh, that's what God does for us. We're covered by the blood. Uh, when we're born again, it, it changes us. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, he makes us new. Uh, there in Ephesians uh, 2, he talks about how he quickens us. We were dead in sin, so he's quickened us together with Christ. Uh, in Ephesians 2.10, We're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He changes us. He makes us useful. He makes us new. Uh, we're alive to God. And it causes us, like I've said already, causes us to have a new family. <laughs> no longer part of Adam's heritage in Christ. We have a new heritage. Uh, Corinthians, he says, in Adam all die. You go the natural way, 
and uh, you'll be separated from God for eternity. Christ is the way. That's why he came. And you know, the Bible says that uh, when you get saved, when you're born again, there'll be some things that'll change in how you live. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to uh, uh, 1 John. We've been in John chapter 3. 1 John is right before the last book there, pretty much, Revelation. 1 John. You know, if, if you consider this on a physical level, there's a difference between life and death. Uh, if you poke me, I'm going to get upset. If you poke a dead person, they don't care. Some years ago, we, our dog got hit by a car pretty much in front of our house. and It was kind of a strange situation because I, I had to bury the dog. And it just looked perfect. Let's just look like our dog, you know. And I, I kept hoping, uh, well, I hope she's dead <laughs> as I dug the hole. But I knew she was because, one, she wasn't breathing. Two, there was no heartbeat. And three, there was no, you know, there's just no glow in the eyes. You know, it's, it's the same thing is true spiritually. When a person is born again, there's evidence of life. Amen. You know, there's a heart. Uh, there's a breath. Yeah, we compare that to, you know, talking to the Lord. Uh, there's a glow uh, about a person. There's a, there's a change in a person's life when they're born again. And, and he gives a lot of these in, in 1 John. We're not going to look at all of them, but I want to give you some of them this morning. Uh, for instance, 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. Uh, characteristics of this new life in Christ. He says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you know you're alive. Right? You ever been unconscious? I've had a couple times now in my life where you, know, you wake up from being unconscious, either from a hospital or sports or whatever. Uh, you know you're alive. There's a witness. I'm alive. You know? And uh, when you're saved, there's the Holy Spirit. You know that you have a relationship with Christ. Uh, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, for instance, he says, He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. That's just saying, you dwell in Christ, Christ dwells in you. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. You know, there's, there's evidence. God's Holy Spirit is, uh, is confirming your relationship with Christ. You, you love the Lord. Uh, you have a, a, a sense of, of life. Now, if your life is like my life, not everything about life is going to make you feel good, you know. Sometimes life is hard, and sometimes life is lots of different things, but you can know you're alive. And spiritually speaking, it's going to be the same. In Romans chapter 8, he said, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. There's that sense of God's Holy Spirit and your relationship with Christ. There's another, 1 John 3, verse 14. We know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. There's a new relationship with Christians. Uh, we've experienced, I mean, you experience it in your local church, obviously. We've had times where you travel to, sometimes even to a country where you don't even speak the same language. And there's a relationship with people who know the Lord. There's just an automatic um, family feeling. Uh, but but more, more specifically, uh, you know, the, the folks that God gives you in, in your local church. God gives you a concern about them. There's a relationship with Christ, and because of that, there's a relationship uh, with his children. Uh, in 1 John 5, verse 4, he says, This is the love of God that we keep his... I'm sorry, that's verse 3. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You know, the new birth, born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You know, there's a different relationship to the world. When, when you trust Christ as your Savior, it, it changes your perspective. You know, there's those who, you know, this world is everything. But, you know, for a Christian, there's an importance here, and, you know, especially the eternal souls of people. And, 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 you know, as Christians, we should do our best and, you know, all of those things. But this is not all there is. Heaven is better than this, and we're, we're looking toward eternity. See, when, when you get saved, God does an immediate work. Born again, life in Christ. 
Interesting how he puts it in Ephesians 2, 1. He says, You hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. New life in Christ. It's a life-changing experience. But you know, it's, it's not just an experience. It's a continuing relationship. God puts in place everything you need for that continuing work of your relationship with Him. Uh, in 1 John 5, 12, he, he gives you life. He that hath the Son hath life. He gives you life, eternal life. In 2 Peter 2, 14, He gives you everything you need to live for the Lord. I'm sorry, 2 Peter 1, 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. God begins a, a work, and he continues that work. In Titus chapter 2, he talks about the hope we have because of Christ. You know, life can be difficult, but as Christians, we don't have to lose hope. If you're born again, uh, you have a different uh, attitude towards life. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Earlier, he'd said in Titus 1.2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. If you're born again, you have hope. Titus 3 and verse 7, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You know, we have a relationship with God through, through Jesus Christ. Well, the question I want to ask this morning is, what about you? Are you born again? We, we've sung a chorus I'm not sure if it's in our hymnal. Do you know that you've been born again? Does the Spirit dwell within, bearing witness that you've been cleansed from every sin and stain? Are you ready if the Lord should come and today your soul should claim? Can you face eternal years free from doubt and dread and fears? Do you know that you've been born again? See, Jesus, Jesus said this is very important. You must be born again. Now, this is the difference uh, for eternity. It'll make a big difference in your, your life and soul in this life, but it'll make even more difference in the life to come. And we all stand at death's door. We, we don't even know. We don't know when we'll go through death's door. There's people who are in heaven and hell today who didn't expect to be there yesterday. We need to know, have you been born again? You know, Paul said in Acts 20, we preach repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And our part is, is to believe. God's part is to save our soul, to make us new. Jeremiah wrote, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Is the Lord your hope today? Are you just living for the crumbs of this world or are you living for the treasures of eternity? We, we read, I mentioned when I read it, uh, one of the most well-known verses in the whole world this morning. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, that's the choice. We can perish or live. We can trust the Lord, we on this, and trust the Lord or not trust the Lord. The choice is yours. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. If you're not born again, he says you can't even see the kingdom of God. Let me encourage you this morning. Uh, make sure. Find out. We're going to sing a, a, a song from our, our hymnal this morning, page 154. Jesus is calling. Jesus is tenderly calling today. And uh, let me encourage you. His call is trust him to be born again. Uh, as you're all coming.